फिर चले बंद यस Hey everyone, um, welcome to Global Biz Apps Weekend 2022, powered by D365 Champs. Hope you are doing well and keeping safe. Uh, I am Ankush Prabha, moderating this session along with Golaknath Mishra. This session is presented by Arpit Shivastav. He will be talking about Power FX Zero to Hero. It will be a great session, I believe. And about a, like a brief introduction about him. He is a Microsoft MVP, M3T, and Power Platform Architect in Cap Gemini, Sweden. He is a regular speaker. Speaker, blogger, and YouTuber on Microsoft Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. He's an expert in different versions of Dynamics 365. We talk about 20, 2011, 13, 15, and 16, and now, and now Power Platform, Power as Power Automate, etc. He's also the creator of Power Pages Builder Tools, which is great. Before I hand over the session to Arpit, I would like to mention that if you have any queries, just please feel free to drop it in the chat window. We'll take them either during the session, if possible, or during the Q and A session. Thank you again for joining, and hope you enjoy the session. Arpit, over to you. Hey, thanks, Ankush. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, from wherever time zone you are joining this event. Hope you all are doing great and enjoying this weekend by learning a lot of interesting stuff. Thanks to the, all the organizer, Venkat, Ankush, Deepak. And whoever is uh, hosting this event uh, today, I'm going to discuss about uh, the Power FX, Microsoft Power FX. So let me share my screen and just please confirm me once you can see it. Can you see my screen? It's visible. Yes. Yeah, yes yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. So today I'm going to discuss about the Microsoft. Uh, Uh, power fx uh, we know like it's a quite interesting topic and it's an ongoing uh, area where microsoft is investing a lot and uh, we have been using it uh, since quite long time ago like in the canvas app but now microsoft is pushing hard to use it as a unified language across the power platform so we're going to discuss about some basic concept about it so it's a zero to hero session so i'll try to cover all the fundamental concepts of power fx and following with some some of the uh, common examples some demonstrations i will also show you with you all right so before starting with this session a quick introduction about me uh, my name is arpish shivastav okay and i am a two times microsoft mvp in the business application i am a microsoft certified trainer i am working as a power platform architect in cap gemini sweden uh i'm basically from india pune location uh, but right now i'm in cap gemini sweden working for a project i'm also leading dynamic 365 user group lead uh, of india dynamic 365 group uh, microsoft community i'm also the ambassador and coordinator of power community um i've been blogging since 2014 i'm, I'm active speakers in a lot of uh, uh, communities uh, and the user groups uh a regular a youtuber not regular i would say because uh, i don't get much time to upload the videos but yeah uh whenever i get the time i upload my, all my uh, you know uh, recordings of all the events so you can uh, go and check out and if if any uh, reusable components or any sort of interesting things i'm doing in my project i usually upload it on my youtube channel as well I'm a trainer as well, and I've also certified uh, on all the Power Platform certification: hundred, two hundred, four hundred, six hundred. Last year, I created a tool uh, for portal automation deployment. It's a Power uh, Power Platform CLI based tool. So, if you are using uh, Power Plat, uh, sorry, Power Portals or the Power Pages, it's a new name uh, in your project. Then you can go and check it out. It's Azure DevOps based tool. So, till now, six hundred plus uh, download has already been. made so if you can start using this tool just to automate your portal deployment it's a great tool as per my personal life i am a fit foodie i love uh, traveling i love running the marathons and the big music lover as well uh, apart from that if you would like to connect with me through my social media channels you can just connect me uh, through you can find me on the google called arpit power guide my youtube channel my website everywhere i can find it with the arpit power guide all right If I talk about the today's agenda, uh, I'm going to discuss about the Power Apps fundamental. What is Power FX? Why we call it a Power FX? What are the advantages of it? What is objective of introducing this language in the Power Platform? How the Power FX is being used in the No Code Platform? 
how it is can be used in the low code platform and how we can use it in the pro code. So obviously Microsoft is pushing hard to work on the no code and low code part. And obviously, you know, you can extend the platform using, uh, you know, some some coding uh, extensibility is as well. So how we can uh, leverage the power FX expressions in the no code, low code and the pro code. And obviously we have some examples. So I'll I'll give you some, you know, quick demonstration of some of the features that I've recently implemented in my current assignments. All right, so we know like we have been working in dynamic CRM since ages, right? And uh, uh, we are working in, uh, we have been working on a lot of uh, versions like 2011 and 13, 15. And now we have the dynamic 365. And one of the most common question is like, what programming language we use, you know? Uh, to write the business logic, right? Because whenever any any application in this world uh, use uh, the language to write the business logic. So same like in the Dynamic 365, when we have to customize the application, what sort of application, what sort of languages uh, uh, we used to have like JavaScript and the C Sharp .NET languages. So these are the two basic language uh, we have been using uh, for writing business logic in the Dynamic 365 and still we are also using it. But the main thing is that the Microsoft is pushing hard uh, to replace this JavaScript and the C Sharp code with the new language called PowerFX. OK, so PowerFX is nothing. It's a new language that Microsoft has introduced. Uh, uh, I would not say the new language is introduced because we have been using it in the Excel and some other products of the Microsoft. But if, if I talk about in terms of Dynamic 365 and the Power Platform, PowerFX is the new language. OK, so if we are using JavaScript and the C sharp that will remain there. But yeah, going forward, the power FX is going to be the future and it's going to be the unified language of the power platform. OK, so whether if you are writing any business logic uh, uh, irrespective of the client side or the server side, the power FX is going to be the common language. OK. OK, so as I told you, it's going to be the unified language for the power platform. It's a Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, Virtual Agents, or the Microsoft Dataverse. Everywhere we're going to see the Power FX going forward. So in, if I talk about the Power Apps, we have been already using it uh, uh, in the Canvas app. So th that was the first component where Microsoft introduced the Power FX. So whatever expressions uh, we write it over there, whatever formula we write it over there, it's it's a basically a Power FX. Okay. But now Microsoft has introduced this power uh, FX features in the model driven app as well. So nowadays if you if you if you try to customize the command bar, uh, which uh, earlier in the earlier days we used to use uh, the squad Duro tool ribbon workbench. So I think it, it's a it's a replacement of that tool that Microsoft has their own power of expression using that you can you know customize your ribbon workbench or your uh, your toolbar of the model driven app. So in the model driven app also you can now, uh, you know, uh, you can write your power FX expression. Obviously uh, it's not full fledged available right now. There are some of the limitations, some of the functions that you are using on the canvas app is not yet available on the model driven app, but yeah, you can start using that. OK, some of the basic operations are uh, available on the model driven app as well. Power Automate, we are already using it uh, to write some of the expressions. I'll also show you in the demonstration that how we can use um, power FX in the Power Automate as well. Power Virtual Agents uh, that Microsoft has recently introduced. Uh, you know, you can define the variables and uh, write your business logic inside your Power Virtual Agents in the chatbot as well. Uh, it is still in preview, uh, so if you want to check it out, I'll also show you in my demonstration as well how you can use it in the Power Virtual Agents. In the Microsoft Dataverse, if I talk about Microsoft introduce a new data type called Formula Data Type. So it's a formula based column where uh, so our, so right now we have the role of fields and the calculated fields where you can you know, write the logic you know to calculate uh, some sort of uh, calculation you can do it. But now in the going forward these two columns going to replace by the power FX type columns. So when you create a new column there is a specific type called formula type column where you can specify the expressions that I, that directly executed at the SQL. So basically Microsoft Dataverse is also going to use the power FX as well. So and obviously in the Power BI as well, uh, you can use the power FX, but yeah, uh, just a thing like power FX 
uh, because those who are working in the Power BI, they are they are already using some of the languages like DAX and the AMS. So the so Power FX is, uh, is is something that is not going to replace that existing language that will remain there in the Power BI. But yeah, uh, this Power FX can also leverage uh, in the Power BI to write back the data to the database. Uh, that that was not uh, the capabilities of the DAX and the AM. OK, so this is the extension of uh, the language that we already had in the Power BI. So so overall, uh, uh, it's a unified formula language uh, to write the business logic across all the Power Platform. Now question is that why we call it FX Power, as we know, like Microsoft using this keyword uh, to brand their all the products of the uh, Power Platform. Uh, whether it's power pages or the power automate or power virtual agents, why we call it FX. So F stands for formula and X stands for Excel. So basically power FX is an Excel like formula based language. Uh, so it's not like other languages uh, where you always, you know, afraid about writing, you know, long syntaxes. You have to remember the programming languages, syntaxes and uh, the OOPS concepts and a lot of things, right? So we always scared about uh, writing codes and all uh, to design an application. So to avoid this fear, Microsoft uh, introduced this language as a formula based. So it's a formula based language. So it's not like uh, that you 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 will be having uh, if you have a technical background or if you know the programming language, then only you can you know design your application. So so millions of users, millions of business users have been using this Excel, right? So they they write the formulas in the Excel. So they can utilize their knowledge or experience in the power FX as well. OK, so it's a formula based language. It's a natural language as well. I'll, I'll discuss about that later. So you don't need to remember some complex syntaxes in a single line of code. You can you can perform a lot of transactions as well. OK, and it, it utilizes all the control flows, operators, you know, the syntax is the formulas of Excel as well. OK, so that's why it's called it as a power FX. OK, so in the picture as well, you can see like uh, in the left side, uh, I have written the power FX uh, expressions inside the canvas app. In the right side, uh, the similar expression is written in the Excel, right? So yeah, there are some difference in terms of uh, the keywords, but yeah, the, the, the logic will remain same and the expression, the, the way of writing uh, this expression will remain same. All right. It's a power FX is basically a language that is for everyone. OK, so uh, just uh, you know, in the earlier days we had a we had a mindset like uh, if you have to design any application, we need the coders or the programmers who, who need to have the uh, you know, the programming background or the technical background, then only they can design the application. But this kind of concept is for everyone. So Microsoft objective that everyone can write the code, everyone can write the expressions. OK, so due to its concise and the simple nature, uh, its programming language is quite easy for you know, app makers and the obviously the developers. OK, so if you are a citizen developer, if you're not having a programming background, you don't know about the programming at all, you can still use some of the no code component. It's also built based on the power effects. So if you design the canvas app, you know like there are some of the some of the features, then you can just simply drag and drop, changing the color, changing the background color. These these kind of things uh, doesn't require coding experience or writing any power FX expressions, right? So citizen developers can use it. Obviously, if you have to customize some of the things or you have to write your own uh, expressions, so for example, patching the data, absurd the data. So these kind of things you can write your own expressions. And obviously professional developers. Have some more capabilities uh, they can uh, if they have the experience in the Azure DevOps, GitHub or uh, Visual Studio Code, they can obviously extend the power effects functions and uh, its capabilities. So it's for all right. Now what what is the uh, basic architecture behind uh, the power effects? I'll, I'll discuss about that, but what is the main concept of uh, power effects? How it actually convert the natural language to the power effects? So it's basically as I told you, it is for everyone who don't know the programming. So it actually convert your natural language to the power effects. So GPT is basically uh, it's a research and deployment uh, based company who actually uh, whose main objective is to you know process 
you know millions of languages available uh, in the world and uh, convert the natural languages into the programming languages okay so you don't need to worry about the programming language and the coding language and obviously the pros it's a microsoft framework that basically used to design apis that basically apis also process you know the natural languages okay uh, based on some artificial intelligence in the background and it's already being used in the in the other products of the microsoft like power bi excel visual studios and all okay so gpt and the pros these are the two basic uh, concepts behind uh, this power base uh, power fx which actually process your natural languages and convert it into the code in the background it's a collaboration based languages so obviously uh, multiple developers can you know collaborate with each other so you know if if you if you are pro in the github or in the vs code visual studios yeah so the visual studio codes github and the azure devops then it actually uh, support the collaboration as well multiple developers can simultaneously work on the similar applications so as you can see in the pictures, uh, it's a uh, GitHub repository where we can directly edit the code and commit the changes and it will reflect in your application. OK. So it, it actually helps you to, you know, uh, to automate the process as well in the ALM process as well. So so overall, Microsoft FX is a low code programming language for everyone. It's a power platform language that you can use it across all the platform uh, components like model driven app, canvas app, power virtual agent, flows. It's a general purpose languages. It's a strongly typed declarative functional programming language like other app uh, uh, languages like C sharp and JavaScript. And obviously you don't have to write the syntaxes similar like the C sharp and JavaScript, but in the background, the concept is same. Unlike the JavaScript, it's not uh, uh, it's a strongly type actually because in the JavaScript you can define the data types and all, but here the data types are already defined that you have to use it. It's an Excel based formula language, so it also you know provides the same structure, data types, operators, functions, and the data flow engine. So, so for example, in the Excel, you know, like you can write the uh, formulas and if any if one cell value gets changed the other uh, cell value automatically gets changed if you are writing the formulas so it's an excel based formula it's a declarative uh, uh, language it's a imperative language so excel is basically the declarative language so the difference between declarative and the imperative is like in the declarative you you only use the program you only use the you know um, what I can say uh, the features, right? What what exactly logic behind that feature? You don't care about it. It's about declarative. So for for example, like in the Canvas app, model driven app, some of the function you can use it. I'll demonstrate in the examples. Some of the features, some of the controls, you can just directly use it. You don't know like what sort of logic or what sort of expression is written in the background, right? So it's a declarative. But imperative is basically you can define your own instructions as well. How should the program or how should the business logic should be executed, right? So you can define your own control flow as well. So for example, on click of the button, what expression you want to perform or what, what sort of operation you want to perform on the database, you can decide that as well. So it's a declarative and the imperative based language. And last but not the least, it's a open source languages. OK, so Microsoft, as, as we know, like it's an open source culture of any programming language. So Microsoft also made this available as an open source software so anyone can you know freely uh, go to the github repository and can start using it and can change as per their need okay all right now if i talk about the power fx uh, architecture uh, it's very important to understand that what's going on in the background if we if we are using the microsoft power fx host application uh, host application we already know like uh, all the application who is using the power fx are called the host applications like canvas app model driven app power virtual agent power automate these are all the host application who are using the power fx and using the variables features and all now there are two ways uh, you know to write the or to use the power fx the first one is a formula bar okay so that was the first uh, thing that Microsoft introduced. And the second thing is uh, analysis part. So analysis basically the recent uh, uh, feature that Microsoft introduced that power FX can also be written in the C sharp application, right? So the, if I talk about the formula bar, uh, the formula bar you you see it in the in the model driven app or in the canvas app. 
it's a basic it's a it's a it's a control that is designed using monaco framework and it's written on the javascript and uh, react based control uh, where uh, you know when you write any sort of expression on the power fx expression you you get to see the intellisense in the drop down you get the syntax error similar like the the code when you write in the visual studio so when you write any sort of code power fx expression you get the intellisense you get the error you get the syntaxes as well you know and uh, you can write uh, obviously uh, the expressions in uh, in the shisha application as well okay so i'll show you uh, in the example like how you can write it in the power fx in the shisha as well so basically you can write it in your formula bar or in the shisha application but in the background as i told you in the background the compiler is basically the same so it automatically detects whether uh, you know the power fx is been written on the web client or in the server side or it's a database uh, sql so database sql is nothing but when you, whenever you are using the formula based column in the dataverse it executes the the expression directly in the sql okay so il is nothing but it's a intermediate language so whatever expression you are writing in your host application it basically converts in the intermediate language Sorry. Yeah, so whatever uh, expression you are writing, it first converts in the intermediate language so that compiler can understand. So and then whatever expression you have written, whether it's in the JavaScript on the power FX, it execute it uh, and send the output back to the host application. So this is basically a complete architecture. And we can also understand this architecture with this picture as well. So for example, I have written a simple power FX expression. OK, and this power FX expression, if you are writing uh, to the web client, for example, in the model driven app or in the canvas application, power virtual agents, the, the host application that is running on the web client in the background, this power FX expression. Is similar to this kind of JavaScript expressions, right? Or if I using this expression in the formula type dataverse column, then in the SQL, this function or the expression will be executing like this. So you can understand if I am using this expression in the formula type column, then it will execute this expression in the directly in the SQL. Or if I am using this power FX expression in the model driven app or in the canvas or the virtual agent, it will it will you know detect uh, the JavaScript similar like this. OK, so in the single line expression, the JavaScript uh, is written in the five to six line of line, uh, line of code and the SQL is written in, you know, seven to eight line of code. But in the power FX expression is a naturally language based expression. You can write your formula or expression in a single language. So this is this is basic uh, architecture behind the power FX. All right, now if I talk about so I talked about the uh, three types of power FX uh, expression using uh, first in the no code, second in the low code, and third one is then the pro code. Okay, now if I talk about the no code, so there are some of the expressions. Oh, sorry, the some of the you know the controls or the UI controls are there, so you don't have to read and write the power FX to start expressing logic. Okay, so there are a lot of customization and logic that can be expressed throughout the simple switches. So in the example number one, I have just added a gallery. And in the gallery control, uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, there are a couple of uh, properties. I can directly change it. I can change the background color. As you can see it in the in the image, I can change the properties, but I don't need to write the expression for that. It automatically changing, right? So this is also the power FX expression without writing any code. So it's a no code power FX expression. In the right image, I can I can show you like in the gallery control. If you want to filter out the record, so in the earlier before we we did not had uh, the power FX, we had to write you know lines of code to filter uh, the records, whether it's a JavaScript or in the SQL, we have to write lines of code to filter it out. But in the right image, you can see it. I can directly change the views to active employees or inactive employees, and my gallery will automatically you know filter it out based on that. Right, I don't need to write the expression for that. So this is the example of Microsoft Power FX no code. This is just in two examples I've just shown you. But but if you can just uh, if you can just go to the Canvas app, there are list of operations, there are list of features you can use it where you don't need to write the don't even write uh, the expression to you know get your things done. 
Another thing is the low code. So power effect describe the business logic to concise yet powerful formulas. So some of sometimes you know some of the expressions or some of the features that is given in the canvas app control or the model driven app are not sufficient to fit your requirement. Then you can write your expressions as well. So if you can see here, I have just written an expression look up orders number selected or employee store first name. So in this expression, right? What I'm doing is I'm just, uh, you know, getting the employee name whose order uh, um, who's, uh, in the in the order table where the number is equal to selected. OK, now if I if I compare this power FX formula uh, equivalent with the JavaScript, if you can see here in the JavaScript, if I have to, you know, write the code in the synchronous mode, I have to use the async keyword, then keyword, a lot of promises I have to use it so that I I need to make sure like the data is coming in the uh, in the right to format or in the right time. So but in the power FX, I don't need to use or specify asynchronous specifically. It automatically detects. OK, the second thing is that I'm using lookup uh, function. So lookup is basically uh, uh, for the delegation purpose, so it automatically knows like what to send to the server and what data to be retr uh, retrieve from the server, right? Relational data, so I'm using uh, simply dot extension to you know get the data from the relation table without uh, using any expand keyword or by joining uh, the two tables, right? You can just simply use dot to get the relational data. OK, and obviously uh, how many columns I need to retrieve it. It is also depend like I just need to retrieve the first name, so I just need to call like employee dot first name. Uh, but if in the JavaScript we need to provide all the list of column information in the select column, right? So this is the advantage of using power FX in the single line of code. I am replacing the seven, seven to eight line of JavaScript code. OK, so this is this is the example of low code. OK, now if I talk about the pro code, so pro code is basically the, the code that is for the professional developers. So low code makers sometimes build things that require the help of an expert or you know taken over by the professional developers to maintain and enhance. So if you may ask the question like, uh, you know, what sort of files that is basically used to store the power FX expression? So the answer is the YAML file. So YAML file is basically used to hold all sort of power FX expression. So if you are a pro developer and you don't want to, you know, uh, write the expression directly in the power apps uh, studio or power apps designer, then you can simply export that uh, uh, your application, open the MS app file and you can just edit that directly inside your GitHub or in your Visual Studio code in the Azure DevOps as well. So if you can see in the picture, uh, I just exported the MS app file and I can directly see uh, all the YAML files. So this is nothing but the power FX expressions. So I can directly, uh, you know, put my code or enter the code or change the code and directly push it to the repository and I can check uh, or update the code directly in the canvas app or in the model driven app. So this is the way how you can professional can professional developer can utilize this in the similar way power FX formula can be stored in the YAML. It's uh, yet another marker blank resource file which are easy to edit with Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio or any other text editor and enable power FX to be put under source control. So you can directly push your code to you know GitHub, any other repository uh, or you know your source control and you commit your changes to reflect the changes to your application. So this is for the professional developer. Now, if I talk about some of the examples so that you can understand like how the power FX uh, is being used globally uh, across the power platform components. So I'm going to take the example, uh, the use case one, the model driven app and the Microsoft Dataverse. Add a custom button on the form to approve or reject the request. So it's just a simple you know, uh, requirement. We usually get it like uh, I need to have two custom buttons, you know, on the form so that I can approve or reject the request. So if I heading back to my CRM application. OK, so this is my CRM application. And if you're not aware, like uh, right now we have uh, a new designer. So I just uh, for those who are new to this, I can show you. You just need to go to the make.powerapps.com. OK. You just need to choose your environment and then you go to the solution. So I just created a new solution already. 
So if you want to, so what I want to do is I just want to add. So let's say this is the form. OK, so I have a form over here and what I want to do is I just want to add to custom button approve and to check. So I've already added just to save the time. So I've already added these two buttons. So let's say if I have to add to custom button earlier, we we have to go to the ribbon workbench. It's also a great tool. Obviously, we have been using since long time back, but yeah, but now nowadays it's quite easy. You can write your expressions uh, using power effects now. So in order to add these two buttons on this power speaker form, if I go to the model, uh, obviously I have to add uh, the application on my solution. So if you can see here, I just added my model driven application called power guide into my solution. And if I go here, there is an option called edit. And if I open to edit a new tab, it opens uh, a new designer. In the new tab where you can simply, uh, you know, design your model driven application, you can change the icons and everything. And obviously, if you have to change the navigations and all, you can you know do it from here. So currently, I have the product and event. If you can see in my model run application, so product and event is the two areas right now. But if you have to customize uh, the ribbon of or the toolbar of of a particular form, you can just expand that. And uh, okay, okay, let me go back to here. And there is an option called edit command bar. OK, so this edit command bar uh, is basically uh, open all the toolbar options for that particular table so that you can, you know, change. Uh, uh, you can write your power effects expression, you can add the button, you can remove the button, all sort of operation you can do it or you can play around with the command bar. So if I click on edit command bar, it asks you what kind of commands you want to edit. It's a main grid, main form, subgrid or the associate form. OK, so I just want to change uh, or add the button on the main form. So I just choose this and click on edit. So as soon as I do that, I can see all the default buttons over here. So as of now, there are some of the limitation as I told you, unlike Canvas app, uh, you know, in the Canvas app, you already have full fledged uh, operations available. But right now in the model driven application, all the features are not there. But yeah, uh, but in the future you will see a lot of other uh, features as well. OK, so what I want to do is I want to create new buttons, so I need to go here. OK, and I can create three types of button command drop down and the split type of button. So I just added two buttons over here approve and reject. OK, and I can simply drag and drop also just to place the position of it. So it's it's quite simple. You don't need to you know change the order at all. You just need to drag and drop. That's it. Now the interesting fact is that if I click on the approve, what sort of operation I want to perform? OK, and uh, so if I go in the right panel, you can change the icon as well. So there are some list of default icons are also there. Uh, if you don't want to place any icon, you can use no icon. Some if you choose use icons or some some common icons that Microsoft has already provided, you can utilize that. And if in case uh, some of the out of box icon is not fitting your need, then obviously you can upload your web resource icons. Recommended is SVG format, so uh, you can simply download that and you can upload it and you can use it. The interesting thing is that there are two things over here, action and the visibility, right? These are the most two common operation we we actually play with the button. So when when the you know the button should be hidden, when the button should be you know uh, the visible. So we can control it using visible property. So if you want to uh, show that button always without any condition, you can just keep it as a show. Or if you want to hide and show conditionally, then definitely you can just put the show on conditional from formula and just click on. You can see it FX. It stands for power FX. If you open the uh, formula bar, I have written a single line of power FX expression. So when this button should be visible, when the status is under review. OK, so this is the basically uh, uh, entity which actually hold all the session request. So for example, if I talk about the D365 champs, so all the speakers who are submitting their session, it basically dumped down uh, in this particular table. And uh, as soon as uh, the, the session gets created in the CRM, the status, the default status will be under review. So what I what my condition is if the status of this session request is under review, then only this approve and reject will be visible, right? Once the session is approved or once the session is rejected, 
I should not see this, you know, the approve and reject button. So based on that, I have just put this condition like uh, self dot selected. So self stand for, uh, you know, uh, it basically the record that is currently being opened or, uh, you know, the record where the button is being clicked, right? So uh, you you display a particular command bar on a particular record, right? So it self is stands for, uh, you know, the context. In the plugin, you use the context, right, to get the current record. Similar like that in the self is a current record dot selected item called session status. So this basically the self dot selected item stands for the current record. So if the current record session status equal to under review, then only this button should be visible. And same goes with the reject. The self selected item session status is power speaker under review, then this should be visible. So this is all about uh, you know the visibility property. Now, what operation I want to perform on click of approve? What I want to do is as soon as I click on the approve button, I want to change the status uh, this to approve, and I want to show the confirmation dialog box as well. And if I want to reject this session, uh, so the same operation I will perform on the reject operation. Now, just forget about the power FX. If if we had this requirement before the power FX introduced, the 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 most common thing we we used to have is the JavaScript, right? So there is no way, there is no other way to write this logic except the JavaScript. So you can just imagine like how the uh, gradually uh, the, the 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 JavaScript is being replaced by the Power FX. Not completely because there are uh, still there are a lot of operations that is still valid for the uh, supported in the power in the JavaScript, not in the Power FX. But yeah, gradually it's being converted into Power FX. All right, so if I go to the approve, uh, what action I want to perform? Again, uh, there are two options in the action, whether you want to trigger any JavaScript or you want to run the PowerFX expression. So it's up to you. So there are two options. Either you want to run the PowerFX formula or other uh, JavaScript, okay? So I, I have to perform the PowerFX expression. So I'll just keep this and open formula bar. So if you can see here, what I'm uh, what I'm doing is I'm just simply checking whether the session title so self dot selected item is basically the current record. If the current record session title is uh, is blank, okay. So I will notify the user that event title cannot be blank, okay. Or otherwise, if the event title is there, then uh, I'll show the confirmation box. Are you sure you want to approve the session? And this this is the way how you can uh, design the dialog box. How simple it is. It's a single line of code by using that you can simply show the confirmation box, the message, the title of the dialog box, you know, the confirmation, uh, you know, the button text. Yes and no. If the user press yes, then I simply, you know, perform the patch operation. So patch operation is uh, simply uh, will absurd the data in the, into the data verse. So what I'm doing is I'm just simply changing the status of the self selected item uh, to the approved. OK, and then again, I'm just sending uh, one more message. The session has been approved, so it's a simple power FX expression using that. I can simply change the, uh, you know, uh, the status of the session to approve. OK, and the similar like that, I have uh, the similar expression on the on the reject. So if I go here, open formula bar. The only change is that I'm just changing the status to reject it and uh, some confirmation message change, but the, the rest of the part will remain same. OK, so let's see how it works. Actually, if I go here. OK. Let me refresh this screen. OK, so if you can see here now the status is under review right now, so the uh, we can see the toolbar option approve and reject. So if I click on approve, it's asking the confirmation box. Are you sure you want to approve this session? I click yes. So session has been approved and that's it. I don't need to create a web resource. I don't need to create a JavaScript and nothing else. OK, I just need to call the power FX expression and now the status is approved and the button also gone. OK. And again, let me take the next example. So as you can see here, I have not provided the session title and trying to approve the session, but I'm getting the error. Even title cannot be blank, right? 
So this is the way how you can write your power FX expression on the toolbar button. You don't need to go with the, you know, the ribbon workbench tool. So this is the first example, uh, like how you can use the uh, power FX expression in the model driven application at a custom button. Now the next one is how to use the power FX expression in the canvas app. So similar thing, uh, we can check with the canvas app application. I want to approve or reject the session from the canvas application. So I have a sample canvas app application created for you. So yeah, so this one. So let me refresh this data first. All right, so if you can see here, I have a simple canvas app application where I'm uh, showing list of all the uh, speakers who have submitted the session and what expression I'm writing. Um, so as I sh as I told you at the time of uh, presentation, like uh, there are some of the expressions. For example, this is the gallery control, right? Now in this gallery control, uh, there is a view option where currently the selected is none, right? But if I select it as a active power speakers, it will show only active power speakers, right? If I choose the inactive power speakers, I will I, I will have only one record, right? Or so si similar like that. So if you can change it to active one, you can see the filter operation is already being performed, right? I don't need to write any expression. So this is the example of low code power effects. If I want to change the fill, uh, change the background color of it, I can simply go to the fill property and can change it. It's not only the fill property. These are all the expressions I can use it. So these are all the events that can trigger and can change the properties of it, right? So I don't need to write any sort of uh, code or power FX expression. Now where I need to write the power FX expression, it depends. So for example, like uh, I just choose it to none. Now where I need to write the expression. So for example, uh, on click of approve, I just want to change the status in the in the data verse because on the click of this approve, I need to interact with the data verse, right? It's not only about the Microsoft data verse, I can interact with any data sources. So on the click of approve, I want to uh, approve the session and on click of reject, I want to reject the session, right? So similar like the model driven power FX formula, I'm just simply using if the session title is not blank, then simply, you know, uh, just performing the patch operation and changing the status to, you know, approve, right? So. Now you can imagine how this language is unified, right? Uh, in the power of uh, the power FX, uh, in the similar fashion, we are writing it in the Canvas app. In the similar way, we are writing it in the model driven application. The similar goes with the reject operation like that. Now, if I want to disable the button, so for example, like, uh, like you can see the different colors are there. So yellow color is basically uh, showing like this session is still under review. And uh, this green uh, uh, basically detects like uh, this session has been approved. Or if I reject this session, so it will turn it to red. OK, so how I'm changing this color based on that. So this is also a power FX expression part. So if I go to this rectangle, so I just added a rectangle uh, on the screen. And what I'm doing is I'm just using a switch statement and just checking like what is the status of the current record. So if the status of this item so this is the basic only uh, the small difference. This item is basically uh, the current record in the gallery and in the model driven app we have the self dot selected. So this is the only difference. So I'm just checking it out. What is the you know the status of a particular uh, item and based on that I'm just changing the color of it. All right. If it is under review then use yellow. If it is approved then use green and if it is rejected then use the red color. OK, and similar with the buttons. If I go to the button property. And there is a property called uh, it's a display mode. OK, so how you want to display your buttons? So if the session is uh, if the status of the item is under review, then edit uh, then show the button in the edit mode so that I can perform the operation approve or reject. Or if uh, the session he's, uh, has already either been approved or the rejected, then I can disable that button. The similar like uh, I can you know simply hide and show as well, similar like the model driven application. But here I have shown you like how you can disable as well. So this is nothing but the simple power FX expression. And this is the same kind of expression we used to have in the Excel as well, right? So and it's a natural language based as well. So there is no 
though no kind of knowledge required of the programming or the coding language, you can simply use some common English grammar just to write your expressions. OK, so these are the two examples of the canvas app and the model driven app. The third example is the formula based column. As I were talking about formula based column is the new type of column that Microsoft has introduced. So I, I won't say right now that it's a replacement of the calculated column or the roll up column, but I know like there are a lot of limitations are there that uh, calculated column and roll up fields has, especially in terms of writing some external business logic like plugins and workflows. But yeah, formula based column is going to be the replacement in the future, not re not right now because Microsoft knows like there are a lot of customers or the partners are already using this uh, kind of uh, you know business logic uh, using formula. Sorry, this uh, calculated columns and roll up column, but gradually it will replace it with the formula type column. So let's see how it looks like. So this uh, is I my uh, to interrupt you this time check. Yeah, 15 minutes left. Yep, thank you. Thanks yes, for thank reminder. You. All right, so this is the table. OK, and uh, I just uh, added a new column called. Uh, mobile number, so I just uh, labeled it norm, name called mobile number secret. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to store the mobile number here, but there is an ex and uh, there is a column called. OK, so this is a column I have created based on that. I just want to mask the data of that particular mobile number. So keep it secret is just a Boolean field. So what I'm going to do is uh, if the customer has opted to you know, mask his uh, mobile number, so if the keep it secret value is true, then I want to mask the last five digit or four digit of mobile number, else I'll show the, the complete mobile number to the user. So this kind of uh, features you can utilize in the power pages in the portal where customer is opting, like just keep my data hidden in the database so that no one can access it. So these kind of things you can do it uh, using uh, this power FX column. So this is just a simple, uh, example I'm going to demonstrate, but you can use it some other expressions as well. You can use it for aggregation. You can you can use it uh, to you know calculate the row columns. So there are a lot of uh, capabilities are there. So what I've done is I'm just opening this mobile number format. And if you can see here, I just taken this data type as FX type. OK, so if I can just close it and click new column, you can see here. No, oh, just think. So there is a formula uh, type column. This a additional type of column is there. So it's in preview currently, so it's not allowed to use on the production, but uh, you can just use it for uh, learning purpose, how you can use it. So in the mobile number secret, what I'm doing is. If the keep it secret, that means if it is true, then you know, just take the you know the five digits of the mobile number from the left and the rest of the digit, I'm just masking it with the five you know stars OK. And if the keep it secret is false, then I'm using the the as it is mobile number. OK, I'm not uh, you know uh, masking it. So this is just a simple expression. I can write it over here just to change uh, you know the mass format. So if I go into the CRM and if I just simply. Let me open my contract record. So now you can see here. Uh, if the mask data or the keep it secret field is yes, then it's showing the complete mobile. Uh, it's masking the data, but if I just change to no, it will completely show. If you can see here, it shows the complete mobile number, and if I'm masking it, saving it, then it's like that. And the, another advantage of using Power FX column is that like uh, it's not only dependent on the form once. Uh, so it's a data verse column, right? So when you mask the data, it actually applicable on the data verse level. It's not like PCF control or uh, you know some at the form level or the field level that you know you masking the data at the field level and it's only at, applicable at the client side. So it's a server side uh, logic basically. So whenever uh, the data is masked. If you try to pull this data using web APIs, Power Automate plugins, and you know any server side logic, it will remain masked. Okay, so it's a server side masking. So this is the another example. Another example I have is the Power Automate expression. So this is quite common thing. So I I don't need to uh, 
put much effort on this. So, uh, so in the power automate also, you can write your power FX expression. So simply, for example, if I have a simple uh, variable where I've just put the message, hey, welcome to power FX zero to hero session. So in this message, if I want to replace uh, any special character, so I've just simply return like in the welcome message, I want to simply replace this escalator marks with a comma, OK, and replace the dot with the space, OK? So how I can do this? So I can simply use the replace function. So here also, if I go to the expression, I can see the FX. So FX stands for the power FX. So you can write your expression over here as well. Similar, we have the concrete option where if you want to concrete any strings. So in the original message, if you want to add some additional things like session will be presented by your pith. If I test this manually. And flow. So this is just a simple example like how you can leverage the power FX language across your power platform. So this was my original message where we had the dots. We had the escalation marks. So if I replace it, so. The exclamation mark replaced with the comma and all the dot replaced with spaces. And I just concrete one string over here. So now the full message is welcome to power FX session will be presented by your people. Very simple example I've just demonstrated. So the next example we have is the power virtual agents. Power virtual agent is currently in preview. OK, but I can still show you that what is the advantage of using power virtual agents. OK, now in the power virtual agent, we already had the capabilities to create the variables, but now we have the option to, you know, set the val value in the variables using the formulas. So now if you can see in this topic, what I want to do is I just want to greet the customer. OK, and I just want to ask the name of the customer. May I, may I know your name? OK, as soon as customer provide the name, I just want to change it to the uppercase. OK, so what I'm going to do is I just uh, added a new step called uh, set a variable value. As soon as you do that set a uh, variable value, you get the option to write the formula over here. OK. So whatever user has provided their input, I just store it in the variable one and I'm just using the upper you know, expression in the power uh, FX formula to change it to the uppercase. All right, so this is the way how you can use it in uh, in the power virtual agent as well. This is not about only the lower case or the upper case. There might be some of the complex operation you can also perform. So for example, like uh, May I know your name? So let me put my name over here. So if you can see here, it automatically converts it to the uppercase using power FX formula. Now it's asking uh, how can I help you today? Training or the events? I'll choose training. What information you would like to know about the training? So I just wanted to check about my training discount. OK, so let's say some of the trainings has been organizing, so I just want to check. Uh, whether I'm eligible to get the discount on the training being organized. So let's say I'm just providing, uh, you know, the date like uh, 15th December 2022. So I get the message you are not qualified for early bound discount. So what what I've done is if I go down, I'm just asking the question. Training discount or the training offer. So if user choose the training discount option, I again ask the question, please enter your registration date and this registration date. I'm I'm just capturing it as a date time. Now here I have the power FX formula that actually check or that actually uh, you know calculates the date difference. So here in the formula, what I'm doing is I'm just checking if the date which is entered by the user is greater than the current date plus seven days. OK, so for example, the current date is 3rd of December. And I'm just adding the seven days more, so it's it's a 10th December. So if the date is less than the 10th December, then you are not eligible for that. Sorry, you are eligible for that. If it is less than, then you are eligible for that. So let me take another example. So I've just entered the 15, so it's not eligible. So I put again. Training, training discount. Let me copy this. 
So this was qualify for the early bird discount. Now I'm just entering the date, which is less than. Let me enter four. So as soon as I enter four, so you do not qualify the for the discount. So this is the way how you can calculate within the power virtual agent using power FX. OK. All right, so last time check. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm just uh, interrupting you. Only five minutes left. Yep, I have only last slide deck left. Yeah, OK, yeah, thank you. So the last thing is that uh, Microsoft Power FX in the in the C sharp application, how you can write it that. So I'm not going to show you like how to write the expression, but you can just uh, you know just assume like uh, we have uh, the GitHub library available here. OK, so it's a Power FX host sample that Microsoft has provided since I told you like it's an open source language, so it's not like uh, you have to use it what Microsoft has already provided. You can just change it as per your need. So in the Visual Studio, I just clone the repository that Microsoft has provided and you can simply see uh, there are two types of packages uh, similar like uh, when we write the you know C sharp code in the plugins or in the workflows, we had to use some nugget packages like examine.assemblies and all. But similar like that, if you have to write the code in the C sharp application, similar like in the formula bar, you can simply add uh, these two packages, Power FX core and Power FX interpreter. Okay, so these kind of packages you can add it, and you can just start writing your code. So if I just write, uh, you know run this console application and can simply write uh, the formula similar like power fx and just put ampersand arpit enter now you can see here this is the power fx being triggered in the in the c sharp application and just concrete the two keywords so this is the way how you can write your expression in the c sharp application okay the last thing I just want to show you is what's coming next in the power FX. So there are two things which are coming in the power FX expression is the is the support for the data was action. So obviously it's going to be the major change in, in, in the power FX. Right now the data was actions uh, can be called uh, using power automates and uh, in the in the classic workflows. So now, but in the in the future, the date has not been uh, decided by the Microsoft. The general availability date is not decided, but Power FX will start supporting the data wars action. Okay, and the formula column that I have just shown you is currently in the in the preview mode. But yeah, the general availability date will uh, the decided soon. So these are the two things that coming next in the Power FX. So that's it from my side. And if you have any question, just post it out and just connect me. Thank you so much. Over to you, Ankus. Yeah, hi, hi, Apit. Uh, yeah, it, it is really nice session and uh, it's a lot of thing to learn from the session, but I can see one question actually. So maybe if you can answer this question uh, from David, if the power FX column is server side, where is the whole number stored? If it's stored as must somewhere in background, this is the question I can see. Let me see the question. Yeah, you can see okay. uh, 322. Yep. All right. If the power FX column is server site, where is the whole number stored? If it's stored as mass somewhere in the background. I didn't understand the question completely. Power FX column is actually uh, whenever you uh, uh, you know express the logic, it actually performs at the server side. So uh, if I'm masking the field, so it is similar like the field level security. So if I'm if I'm masking the field, it is at the server side, not at the client side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you if, so, if I'm if I'm using the Power FX for formula, it actually runs the SQL query in the background. So it's a server side uh, masking. So you if, if you masking that column, you cannot retrieve it either using web APIs, plugins, workflows or or power automate any sort of logics. OK, I think I think yes, uh, he, he got his answer. OK, uh, thank you so much. Arpe. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, actually, uh, we really appreciate your presence. We hope you are taking uh, you are helping different communities. It's really helpful. And Thank thanks you, for joining us today. Uh, uh, and with that note, together more for the great session, Arbit. Thank you so much. I think we all can switch on the camera. Winter, you can ask the top recording. Yes, yes.